Hey guys, welcome to iCode. These days, we keep hearing this, this single threaded thing everywhere. Redis is single threaded, that's why it's blazing fast. Netflix's Zool API gateway turns on an event loop, which is again single threaded. Nginx handles thousands of connections using single threaded event loop. So it's, it's single threaded and event loop everywhere. Now wait a second, didn't we all grow up thinking that multi-threading means fast? more threads means means better performance then why are these world class systems proudly saying that they are single threaded and somehow this is their secret behind their efficiency as well their success as well so what does single threaded even mean here what is this magical event loop thing and how can one thread beat thousands of them fighting together so today we will discuss all of this in detail from cpu fundamentals to the so called magic of event loop We'll use simple analogies and demo at the, at the end for making the things crystal clear. And I'm sure that after this video, you won't get confused with this event loop thing and the single threaded architecture ever again. So please be a little patient for first few minutes till we discuss the basics and, and move to that event loop architecture. Because discussing the foundation is very important. It will help us understand the architecture which is, which is built on top of it. So please be with me and I'm sure that you will enjoy that how things are linked together. So let's start from very beginning. Process versus thread. Before we jump into event loops, let's revise the basics. So when we run a program, the operating system creates something called as a process. A process is like a container. It has its own memory space, its own resources, complete isolation from the other processes. So think of it like a separate house in the neighborhood. Each house has its own address, own kitchen, own bedroom and one house cannot directly access another house's stuff. But here's the problem with the processes. Creating them is expensive. Context switching between them is slow and the communication between them is not very straightforward. It, it requires different methods, some special methods for that. So that's where threads come in. A thread is like a person who is living inside a house. So the same way multiple people can live in the same house, multiple threads can be there in a process. They share the same kitchen, same living room, but each person has their own bed, own clothes. Now in technical terms, threads share the same memory space, same code, same data, but each thread has its own stacks and registers. So multiple threads in one process can work together easily because they don't need expensive context switching. They can directly share the data. Now here's where things get even more interesting. Hardware threads and the software threads. So a laptop has a CPU, maybe it's, it's a four core processor. And the fundamental truth is that one core can only execute one thread at a time. That's it, no exceptions. Although there's a concept of hyper threading which makes one physical core look like two logical cores, but let's not get into that for now. And anyway, hyper threading doesn't change the things much so let's keep it simple for now. So if one core can execute only one thread at a time, how are we running 20 apps in parallel? Your browser, music player, Slack, Discord, how's all that happening? And the answer is time slicing. The operating system rapidly switches between the threads and it does it so fast that it looks parallel. But in reality, it's actually serial with context switching. So think of it like a chef juggling between multiple dishes. He cooks pasta for two seconds, switches to pizza for two seconds, then back to pasta. The switching is so fast that both the dishes seem to cook together. But here's the thing. Each switch has an overhead. The chef needs to remember where he left the pasta. Put down the pasta ingredients, pick up pizza ingredients. So this context switching costs time. Essentially, more software threads doesn't always mean better performance. If you have 100 threads on a 4-core machine, they are all going through the time slicing. In fact, context switching overheads can actually make things even slower. So let's dig a little deeper into why context switching is expensive. When the OS switches from thread A to thread B, it needs to save thread A's state. CPU registers, stack pointers, program counter, everything. Then load thread B's state, update the memory mappings, clear CPU caches. So all of this takes time. 
for the threads in the same process it is comparatively cheaper because they they share the same memory space but it's still it's it's an overhead so imagine you are reading a book and someone interrupts you for reading a different book you put a bookmark to start from the same page and close the book then you pick up a different book and find where you left off in that book then you start reading now multiply this by thousands of interruptions per second that's what your cpu is doing now the question becomes that can we reduce this context switching chaos can we be smarter about how we use the threads and that's where event loops come in i hope you understood the problem because now it will make sense to understand the solution and that is event loop so imagine a busy restaurant you walk in there's one guy at the counter who is taking orders behind him there are multiple chefs in the kitchen this counter guy is your event loop and the chefs are your worker threads so here's how it works customers comes with a simple request that what's the price of this dish and the counter guy answers immediately no need to go to the kitchen another customer who wants to place a big order let's say pizza for 50 people counter guy doesn't start cooking he prints the order and pass it to the kitchen then he immediately turns to the next customer this is the whole magic the counter guy never blocks he never stands idle waiting for the kitchen to finish he keeps the line moving so while kitchen works on the big orders counter guy handles simple queries new orders billing taking payments etc and when the kitchen finishes the pizza they ring a bell counter guy gets notified he calls the customer to collect their order this is exactly how event loops work now let's translate this analogy to the code the event loop is a single thread it runs in an infinite loop and keep checking for the events these events can be can be new network requests database queries file read operations timer expirations etc for the quick operations event loops handle directly like simple calculation memory lookups json parsing etc and for the slow operation it delegates so database queries file io network calls these things go to the worker threads so when a slow operation completes it triggers an event event loop picks up in the next iteration processes the result and continues the cycle this whole setup this architecture has a name and that is non blocking io the asynchronous processing and that's about it now let's understand that what single threaded really means when people say that that redis is single threaded what do they mean so redis runs its core logic in one event loop thread accepting requests processing commands maintaining data structures all in one thread but this doesn't mean that redis uses only one thread in total redis has background threads for persistence to disk aof rewriting lazy deletion of the expired keys memory cleanup etc now we are not discussing the redis internals here but just telling you that redis of course use other background threads for these things the single threaded part is the main execution engine the part that processes your set and get commands now because these core operations happen on the same thread there are no locks needed no race conditions no coordination overhead and because redis operations are mostly in memory the cpu work is very lightweight so one redis instance can handle millions of operations per second and this performance comes because there's no context switching in the main path no lock contention that's why we say that redis is super fast because of its single threaded architecture so that was about redis who else uses event loop let's look at a few so nginx can handle thousands of concurrent corrections using just a few worker processes each worker runs an event loop one worker can serve thousands of clients simultaneously next netflix zool the netflix's api gateway is built on netty framework and netty uses event loop for network io one event loop can handle thousands of api requests what else Node.js it actually made the event loop famous it runs in a single event loop thread all io operations are non blocking they are offloaded to worker threads and this makes node.js great for io intensive applications next in the list would be kafka so kafka's network layer uses event driven io one thread can handle hundreds of producer and consumer connections this is how kafka achieves such a high throughput and there are a lot more tools a lot more frameworks which are using this architecture and the reason is performance so by now probably you would have figured the answer of 
of how do they achieve this high performance why do event loops perform better than the traditional threading but let's look at it so the first thing that comes is memory usage each thread consumes memory for its stack and that is typically one or two mb per thread so if there are 1000 threads it becomes 1 to 2 gb just for stacks but event loops need minimal memory one thread can handle thousands of connections so it's much more memory efficient next context switching so with traditional model it's one thread per request this brings a lot of context switching and the cpu's time is wasted on it with event loop model one thread handles all the requests so no context switching in the main path and the cpu time is spent on the actual work next comes the lock contention since multiple threads need synchronization locks mutexes semaphores these causes contention and the blocking but with single threaded event loops no need of locks so no contention then comes the cache efficiency so context switches can invalidate cpu caches but single threaded execution is more cache friendly so better cpu cache hit rates and there are a lot of other benefits but that doesn't mean that you should always go for single threaded event loop architecture this is because it has some limitations too so let's discuss some pros and cons of the event loop and this single threaded architecture now event loops are not silver bullets they they work well in certain situations but they have limitations too so if it's an io bound application which spends time waiting for say database queries network requests uh, file system operations or maybe say web apis event loops will work well because while waiting for io they can serve to other requests or if there is a high concurrency requirements that application needs to handle say thousands of concurrent connections apps like chat applications api gateways web servers where event loops can actually multiplex efficiently it makes sense or if it's a simple request like data lookups some some simple transformations makes sense but if it's a complex cpu intensive work event loop doesn't fit well now let's look at some limitations so if it's a cpu bound tasks where where your main thread does heavy computations and blocks the entire system in those cases event loop is not a good fit because because it blocks the processing of other requests another important fact to consider is that event loop may lead to the single point of failure because if the event loop thread crashes the entire system goes down in these cases traditional threading can be more resilient next it increases the debugging complexity as well because asynchronous code can be harder to debug and the stack traces may not give the full picture so unless developers are not comfortable with with callback based or promise based code it can appear a little complex so i hope you got a fair understanding of the event loop but to make it even more clear let's see it in action okay and before we proceed a quick disclaimer for the nerds for for detail oriented folks so in the explanation i did simplify a few things for clarity and the understanding purpose for example nginx doesn't literally run on one thread it runs multiple workers with their own event loops same with netty or node js they also use groups of event loops and background threads for certain tasks and when i said that an event loop can be a single point of failure that's only true if you run just one loop in production people run multiple workers or replicas to handle failures so it's not an inherent weakness of the event loop model so when you hear single threaded event loop it usually means that the execution model is single threaded it's not that the whole system magically runs on just one thread so i hope that it clears it up and this might save me in comment section cool let's move to the demo now here we have two servers the first one uses the traditional thread per request model it uses a dedicated thread for each request and the other one will use the single threaded event loop so one thread will handle all the connections of course using the non blocking io so we will hit both the servers with 1000 concurrent requests and measure the latency and the throughput so let's start okay let me run both the servers first so okay let me actually run the local server which we are going to hit let's start that first okay so this is going to be our downstream server to which we'll make the requests this will be our first server which will be using the the traditional model and this will be our next server which is going to use the event loop thing 
Okay, now that both the servers are running, let's run our benchmark script through which we'll hit the thousand concurrent requests as I mentioned. Okay, so we see that the the total number of requests is 5000 that has been configured and the concurrent connections will be 1000. The first server was benchmarked then the second server was benchmarked and if you see the, the comparison here, in terms of latency we see that the average latency for server A is 324 ms while server B is having just 76 ms so that's a clear distinction and even for the P99 if you will see it's 2119 ms for the server A using the traditional model and for server B it's just 484 ms. For the throughput the average request served by server A that is 1649 requests per second while for server B it's 4870 which is almost three times as that of served by server A. And for the maximum request served per second that is 3120 by server A versus 4871 by server B. So this clearly shows that the server which is using the event loop architecture, the single threaded one, it is much more performant and now we know the reasons that why we are seeing this difference in the performance. And if you want to look at the code of uh, these servers, I can show that as well. It is pretty self-explanatory and I'll put it on, on GitHub and we'll mention the links in the description so you can, you can check them. But uh, let me just show the code very quickly. So in the, for the downstream server which we are, which we are hitting, it's a simple server which is returning OK as plain text and the delay that has been configured by me is 10 ms. You can change this configuration if you want to try with a, with a different delay that how both the architectures perform. Then our server A which is using the, the traditional architecture, it is having a worker pool. Again that is configurable and essentially what it does is it maintains a queue for the requests and the pool of a thread. So if a thread is available in the pool, the request will be executed on, on that otherwise it will wait for its turn. So if you see, uh, this is how we are creating a new worker and uh, this check for the main thread. So for the first time when this will get executed, it would be main thread. But uh, for any new thread that gets created, new worker that's created, for that it will go in the else condition and that is where the execution will actually happen. If you see server B, that is using the event loop and the, the code is pretty short and, and pretty simple. For the benchmarking purposes, I am using AutoCannon to hit 1000 concurrent requests. We can try it with a higher number or a lower number as well just to see that what difference it makes. So that's it. We saw that single threaded doesn't mean weak. Instead, it can be more efficient depending on the type of work. And event loops with non-blocking IO let the systems handle millions of requests and remain, remain fast as well. So if you found the explanation and the demo good, please give a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I tried to explain it with easy analogies and hope it was helpful. Please share your thoughts in the comment section that will help me in making these videos even better and understandable. See you in the next video. Till then, keep learning, keep building.